Okay, so welcome to the video. Today we're going to take a look at how to do Pearson correlation analyses on SPSS. We'll also take a look at some of the assumptions of this analysis and we'll take a look at how we can write up the results of this analysis. So we'll, we'll use the Pearson correlation analysis when we want to understand the relationship between two variables. For example, is the relationship strong? Is it weak? Is it positive? Is it negative? In the case that it's positive, this just means that as one variable increases, so does the other variable. And in the case that the relationship is negative, this just means that as one variable increases, the other one decreases. Uh, so some of the assumptions of the analysis that we're going to look at today include homoscedasticity, linearity, and normality. But we'll get to those later. We'll take a look at what those are and how we can check that those assumptions have been met. So for this example, let's imagine that we're interested in the number of hours that people work each week and how stressed they feel. Uh, so we've got this data here in this Excel file. So I'm just going to start off by copying this data and pasting it into SPSS. So specifically, I'll go to Data View and then I'll go to the top left cell and I'll just click Paste. I'll then go to Variable View and just give these variables some names. So we'll call this one Stress and we'll call this one Hours underscore Worked. I'm just using an underscore there because this column doesn't allow spaces. So once I've done that, I'll go to measure and um, I'll specify that both of these variables are scale variables. So once we've done that, we can see that those names have appeared at the top of these two columns and we can start checking some of those assumptions that I mentioned. So let's start off by creating a scatter plot and that will allow us to investigate the assumption of normality and so, sorry, not the, the assumption of linearity and the assumption of homoscedasticity. So we'll go to graphs, then down to legacy dialogues, then across to scatter slash dot. I'll then just tick simple scatter, then I'll go to define, and then I'm just going to put stress in the y-axis and hours worked in the x-axis, and then I'll go to OK. And so that produces this scatter plot for us. And basically what we want to see with respect to the assumption of linearity is that these sort of dots are basically organized in a straight line, which sort of seems to be the case here, right? We can imagine that we could draw a straight line through these dots. So that suggests the assumption of linearity has been met. With, with regard to the assumption of homoscedasticity, that just means that the amount of variation in one variable is similar across different points of the other variable. So we basically want to see that the, the spread of the data is similar across uh, different points in the axis. And what we want to see is sort of a cigar-shaped pattern or a sort of rectangle pattern in these dots. So that so this sort of data suggests, because we do have a sort of rectangle-shaped pattern, that the assumption of homo scedasticity has been met. If, on the other hand, we saw that these points were sort of more triangularly shaped, so this, they were more spread out at one end of the axis compared to the other end of the axis, that would suggest that the assumption hadn't been met. So now we've checked those assumptions, so we've checked linearity and homoscedasticity. Let's move on to checking the assumption of normality. So I'll do that by going to Analyze, then I'll go down to Descriptive Statistics, then across to Explore. I'll then just transfer both of these variables to the dependent list box. I will check Plots down here. I will go to Plots up here. I will uncheck Stem and Leaf. I will check Histogram. I will check normality plots with tests, then go to continue. I'll go to options and I'll select exclude cases pairwise. This actually won't make a difference in the case of this data set because this is only relevant when you have missing data. So in this data set, we don't have any missing data. If you did have missing data, it's usually recommended that you, you choose the exclude cases pairwise option instead of the exclude cases listwise option just because if you choose the exclude cases list-wise option, you can end up excluding a lot, a lot of your data unnecessarily. So I'll choose this option here. I'll go to continue and then to okay. So that's gonna generate some output, which will tell us about the assumption of normality. So let's first take a look at test, this tests of normality table. And specifically, I'm gonna focus on the shapiro wilk test. So if we take a look at the stress row, and then at the sig value in that stress row, we can see that this value is above 0 
0.05. So that suggests a non-significant uh, effect. And in this case, that tells us actually that the assumption of normality has been met. So we want to see a non-significant value in this case. And the same is true for the hours worked variable. We can see that there is a non-significant effect because this value is above 0 0.05. So these sig values suggest that the data are normally distributed in both of those variables. And if we take a look at the histograms that are also generated, uh, these appear to support that assumption. We can see that this, uh, these data are sort of normally distributed in that there is, a sort of, there is a sort of big peak in the middle and there's like small tails on the side. And basically this is quite symmetrical. So that suggests that the data are normally distributed. So that's the data for stress. And if we just go down to the other histogram, so this is the hours worked histogram. So we can basically see the same thing. There's sort of small bars on the sides and then bigger bars in the middle. And this is sort of more or less symmetrical. So that suggests that the hours worked variable is also normally distributed. So now we've checked those assumptions, we can go on to actually running the Pearson correlation analysis itself. So let's go to analyze, then down to correlate, then across to bivariates. And then I'm just going to transfer both of these variables into the variables box. Um, I'm going to check that Pearson is ticked, and then I'll just go to OK. So if we take a look at this table then, we can see that the Pearson correlation value is 0.851 in this case. And because it doesn't have a neg it doesn't have a minus symbol in front of it, this suggests that the, the correlation is positive. And specifically, it suggests that the relationship is very strong. So with correlation, the value can range from minus one, which would suggest a very strong negative relationship, to positive one which would suggest a very strong positive relationship. So in this case, this value is quite close to positive one. <clears throat> so we can conclude that there is a strong positive relationship between these two variables. And if we take a look at the sig value, this is clearly below 0 0.05. So we can also conclude that the relationship between these two variables is significant. Okay, so let's take a look at how to write up these results. So I would start off by reporting the results of the assumptions. And so I would say something like, an inspection of histograms suggested that the assumption of normality was not violated. So there I'm just referring to these histograms that we took a look at earlier. So we could just say something like this and then perhaps refer the reader to an appendix where they can find the histograms. And then I've said in line with this, shapiro wilk tests suggested that stress and hours worked were normally distributed. So you can see that I've reported some statistics here. So let's just take a look at how to find those values. So those values come from this uh, test of normality table. So we've got this 917 here, we've got a 20 here, and we've got this 0 0.088 here. And we can see that this sort of lines up with what we've got here. So we've got uh, w, so W actually refers to um, the statistic here. So the statistic is 917, and I've just rounded that to two decimal places. So I've said W equals 0.92. And the 20 in brackets comes from here, and then the sig value 0 0.088 um, is reported here. So P equals 0 0.088. And then I've just done the same thing for the hours worked statistics too. So I've just taken these values here and I've put them here. So that refers to the assumption of normality. And so let's now take a look at the assumption of linearity and the assumption of homoscedasticity. So I've just said additionally, an inspection of a scatter plot suggested that there was a linear relationship between stress and hours worked and that the assumption of homoscedasticity was not violated. So in that case, I've just referred the reader again to an appendix, and I would include a version of this scatter plot as an appendix. So now we've reported the, the assumptions, we can take a look at the, the Pearson correlation itself. So we've just said a Pearson's correlation analysis indicated that there was a strong, positive, and significant correlation between 
stress and hours worked. So the first value we've reported here is the 0.85. So we've said r equals 0.85. And let's take a look at where we got that from. So I've just rounded this value to two decimal places. So that's the r value. The second value is n equals 20. So that's just actually the number of participants in this uh, study. So that's n equals 20. And lastly, I've said p equals less than 0, 0, 001. So that just comes from here because we see that the sig value is 0 0.000, so we just know that the value is less than 0 0.001. Uh, so that's about all there is to it. Um, hopefully that's clear. If you have any questions about anything, please let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks very much for watching.